Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. Hey, There's a few common setup issues that I see time and time again, and I think it stems from the ax motion. It feels really powerful when we have a golf club. Let's imagine this is a golf club for a second. If I feel like I'm gonna hit this golf ball and I bring this thing over my head and I chop down into the golf ball, it feels like I have tons and tons of power tons and tons of speed. I feel like I could have chopped that golf ball in two. And I think every golfer from when they begin, when they very begin to start playing, they want to feel that really powerful motion. Well, in golf, unfortunately, that doesn't really work. Instead of having that over the head chop type motion, and I'll fix that, don't worry about the tee, you need to be coming from the inside, get the club in the slot, and then feel like you can deliver that club with a good path to have tons of power and tons of speed. If we continue to set up in ways that get us into that chopping type position, we're gonna lose speed, we're gonna lose distance. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three of the most common setup myths, setup problems, that get you into that chopping position rather than being into a powerful position where we can get into the slot. Once you get set up the right way, you're gonna hit the ball a lot farther. All right, so let's jump right in here. Let's talk about the first issue that can really wreak havoc on your speed. And if I'm kind of imagining that powerful feeling of me coming down and chopping into this golf ball, we all know we don't want to do that, but it feels so good doing that. If I visualize that, one thing that I'll do with my setup is I'll set up in a position where I would have a lot of power coming down in this angle. And if you notice my shoulders, so if I was to put a golf club across my shoulders here, this would be level with the ground. This would be a little tilt away from the target, my head getting farther behind the ball, my spine being kind of angled away from the golf ball. That's really good. But if I'm set up in a way that I feel like I'm gonna come down into this golf ball really powerfully, a lot of times what will happen is my shoulders will get level. I'll get too far kind of to the left if you're looking at my shoulders. And now I'm in this position that feels like I can slam down in this golf ball with a lot of speed, with a lot of, a lot of energy, but it really just doesn't work in golf. So that's the first key. What I want you to do Go ahead right now, even if you're not on the driving range, grab a club, grab a broom, whatever you have to do, follow right along with me on this. And this is really gonna help a ton. Put a club across your shoulders. So hold it right on the tips of your shoulders here. Go ahead and bend forward into your posture. And then I'm gonna feel like my belt buckle goes a little forward toward the target. My upper body gets a little bit more behind it here. My head's behind the golf ball. My chest is behind the golf ball. And you're gonna notice how I create a little bit of an angle with my club there. So just a slight angle is plenty. I don't have to go like this and go really a ton. But what I want you to do is set up very level and then I want you to tilt away, let's call that about 10 degrees or so with my shoulder angle. Doesn't have to be more than that, a little more, a little less, not a big deal. So go ahead and do that about 15 to 20 times just to get comfortable getting behind that golf ball, just like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my golf club repeating that same action. So here I'm setting up I'm getting a little tilt away, and now all of a sudden, I've tilted everything much more to the inside. I've created this big area right here where I can swing my hands and arms from the inside. I can get that club into the slot, and that's gonna make it a lot easier to create the real speed that we need and not that over-the-top type speed. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna hinge forward, a little tilt to my shoulders. My head is behind the golf ball. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, nice draw right down the left side of the fairway. All right, now the second piece of this is gonna be a little trick with your elbow. If you get your elbow in the right position, it makes it so much easier to come down from the slot, come down from the inside like we're talking about to get rid of that ax chop type move that kills our distance, kills our power. So what we're gonna do here, and the way I want you to do this, go ahead and set up to the golf ball. If you're in your living room, just set up to an imaginary golf ball, either way is fine. And I'm gonna get in my shoulder tilt first. Now I'm gonna get about 10 or 15 degrees or so of shoulder tilt like I talked about. And then from there, that's when I'm gonna add my hand. So if I add my right hand from this position, it's gonna be much more under or from the inside when I'm adding the right hand. That helps me to get my shoulders a little more square to the target. It helps promote that tilt. It helps promote me coming more from the inside when I'm doing that. So if you look at my palm of my right hand, it's gonna feel much more underneath the club versus if I'm too level with my shoulders and I add the right hand on there, now all of a sudden my palm is on top of the club. That's what's called a weak grip. And it's very easy for that to turn into a slice or kind of chop down over the top move. So get in the tilt, 15 or 20 reps, add the right hand in there, and then we're gonna close our grip. So a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to have the hand way under here like this, like I'll see some people really trying to exaggerate it. Just get a little bit to the right. If you're looking for a few key checkpoints there, I'm looking for 
the index finger and my thumb, if I cinch those together, that's gonna be pointed roughly toward my right shoulder. So that's when you know you're getting about the right amount of it. It should look something like that. The second piece of this right hand trick is what I talked about with the elbow. A big mistake when you get your shoulders too level, I'm gonna put this hand on top, palm down, and now my elbow pit is pointed toward the target. That sets me up way too level with my shoulders, way too far to the left, and I really have nothing I can do from this position rather than to chop down over the top and really make a weak swing here. So as I'm adding my right hand, I wanna feel like my elbow, if I look at a, the, the pointy part of my elbow, the bottom of my elbow, I'm gonna feel like it's in toward my hip a little bit when I'm doing that. Now you can also see from this position, if I'm looking from down the line, how that's a little bit under my right forearm. So I'm exaggerating here so you can see that on camera, but this is under or lower. This would be over top. I don't want this or I'm gonna really chop down into it. So set up, get your tilt, add your right hand, palm up, and then feel like that elbow is kind of towards your hip there. Now I'm in a powerful position where I can really get it inside from the slot and get that great, really athletic setup. Now the third piece of this really athletic, powerful setup is gonna be my stance. And I see players all the time go wrong with this and it's actually become some pretty common instruction uh, the last few years is we want our stance fairly narrow or just shoulder width apart. Now, we could argue that, but there's a great test for this. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and set up to the golf ball and I want you to start with your stance really, really narrow. Just have your feet almost together, touching. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a swing now and I'm gonna try to kill this golf ball. I'm gonna try to hit it absolutely as hard as I can and see how far I can hit my driver. I'm even gonna get my tilts and everything like I was trying to do with my shoulders and my arm and let's see what happens. I smoked that one. That's about as good as I can hit one swinging from that way. Down the right center of the fairway, According to my flight scope, I swung 107 miles an hour and about as daggone good as I could hit one. I hit one 280, so not too bad. If everything else in your body is working well, if your hands, arms, shoulders, all that is delivering the club properly, you can do a lot of things with the lower body wrong and still get some good distance like I was talking about there where I showed there. Now what I want you to do is gradually widen that stance up. Let me grab a couple golf balls here. And I'm gradually gonna go wider and wider until I found my, find my most athletic stance width. So you don't have to listen to me. I don't have to, I'm not the, in charge of exactly what you have to do. Find out for yourself. Start very narrow and then go wider and wider in your stance until you feel like you're the most athletic. For you, let's say you have this really wide, powerful stance like this, that's okay. As long as you move your feet a little bit, that's gonna be completely fine. You can set up that way and still be really good. What I've found for most players is they like to set up, and I've tested this with quite a few players, a little wider than shoulder width apart. So if I stand straight up and down, you can see about how wide my feet are here. If I drew a line vertically from the ankle, it would be outside my shoulders, both my right foot and my left foot. This is about the most athletic I can get from my own personal stance. This is about the width that I see for most players. So a couple inches wider than your shoulders is perfect. Look at Rory McIlroy, the longest pound for pound hitter on the PGA Tour. You're gonna to see a nice wide stance like this. This is athletic. My legs are bent. I feel like I could really drive off the ground when I'm doing this. Now, the one thing you don't wanna do from here is I don't wanna keep my feet still. I don't wanna keep my feet kind of suctioned to the ground there and be swinging all arms. I have to go ahead and let my feet move. On the back swing, my left heel is gonna come up slightly. On my follow through, I'm really gonna let that right foot rotate all the way around. That's a very, very good key. But as long as I'm doing that, I can go as wide as I want and still have the movement and the, the freedom in my golf swing. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up what I feel like is my most, most powerful stance and let's tie all three things that I talked about together. Number one, I have a little bit of a shoulder tilt. Number two, my right hand is coming into the club a little bit more from the bottom with my right elbow pit up. Number three, I have that nice athletic wide stance, a little bit of knee bend. I feel like I'm playing shortstop here. And now I'm in a position where I can really hit this golf ball pretty daggone hard. Let's give it a whirl. All right, hit that one nicely, right down the center. Hey guys, welcome to beautiful Heathrow Country Club in Lake Mary, Florida, my home course. And we're gonna talk about three tips that are really gonna help you to hit your driver much better. Now, when you get up to those holes, they got a little bit of water on them. Maybe you get those par fives like this. It's just so much more enjoyable to smoke a driver right down the middle of the fairway 
and not even have to worry about being in the rough or out of bounds or that kind of thing. So we're gonna do three things that you absolutely must do to hit your best drives. Let's go and get started. All right, so the first piece I wanna talk about is what I call snap, don't slap. So nobody wants to slap at the ball. We don't wanna lose that club head speed. And when we slap at the ball, basically what that means is I'm using my hands kind of back and forth this way. Oftentimes I'll cast a little bit and then the club head outraces my hands and I end up kind of slapping at the ball. The disadvantage of that is now my club face is very inconsistent. One time it's closed, one time it's open, and I'm also gonna have a tough time getting speed from this. So let me go ahead and hit one. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this slow motion video that's gonna come up here in a second. So I'm gonna try to slap at this ball, really cast it from the top. Yeah, and I hit that, I hooked that ball 40 yards to the left, almost onto the road. Hopefully I'd hit a car over there, but it's very difficult to be consistent when I'm doing that. There's no way I can hit a fairway when I'm swinging this way. What's happening is, if we look at our wrist and we kind of put them in front of us, if I bend my wrist to the right this way, this would be flexion with my left wrist. It's called extension with the right wrist. We don't need to know those terms. That would be to the right and then back to the left. A lot of times people think we need to get speed by doing this and by kind of pushing the club through to help to accelerate it. When I do that, that starts to flip the club, to slap the club, and it's gonna outrace my hands. Anytime the club head gets in front of your hands before contact, you are dead in the water. It is gonna be almost impossible to have control of that club face. When it outraces them, it becomes very, very unstable. That's a slap motion, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. Now, a snap motion is very diff different. I still want that club to release, so I wanna have some lag. I wanna get that club to whip on through. It's snapping, I'm getting that speed at the bottom, but it's when I'm doing that and how I'm doing that that's gonna make a world of difference. So as I'm about halfway in my downswing, you'll notice that's my, what we call our maximum lag position. So in that max lag, now I've created this big angle with my hands and my arms. My body's going ahead and opening up, and as I continue down, now my club still has a pretty good size angle in it. If you look at the butt end of this club, if you imagine a laser beam kind of shooting out of there, it's not turned back up yet. My club isn't pointing back up toward my body. It's pointing out kind of down the fairway. Now from here, to get that club to really release, I wanna snap the club head. That's when I'm gonna start turning this club head back up or this grip back up to release the club head and to get a lot of speed from the club head there. So that's what we call the snap action. You can call it the release, you can call it whatever you want to. And the big key to really put this together that we talk about in the Top Speed Golf system is I want this to release about 45 degrees in front of me. So if I imagine a line going from my chest 45 degrees out in front, whenever that club gets fully released, now it's gonna be pointing in that direction. So I'm still letting that club whip on through or snap through, but it's not a slap. I'm letting that happen in front of the golf ball, and now my club is just kind of trailing along behind. The golf ball is just getting in the way. I'm releasing out in front, and that impact is just happening. So let me go ahead and hit one here the correct way. We'll show you some in slow motion. I'll give you a couple tips on how to do this exactly. There we go, hit that one great, right down the middle of the fairway. I got that lag, and then I got that to release out in front. Now in the first one, we talked about how we didn't want to push with the, the hands or wrist, because now my club head outraces my hands and it gets really unstable. In this one, now I'm, I'm taking my hands here down at the ball. You'll notice my right wrist is angled back in what we call wrist extension, or my knuckles back to my elbow. I'm gonna feel like my palm of my hand is still facing down to the ground. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like I do this motion. So if I'm casting a, a fishing pole, my thumb goes from up to really going down this way. That's what's called ulnar deviation or just a casting or a flip type motion. I'm doing that way down here at the ball in that type of a direction. So my hand isn't going this way and cupping, it's going down, just like I'm doing this with a fishing pole. And now as I do that in front of the golf ball, that's gonna release that club. Notice how here, both my wrists are nice and straight. There's no bend in those at all. If I was flipping, that would look like this as I'm coming through impact. And my wrist would be cupped here, and it would be bent, back, bent forward like that with this other hand. That's gonna to lead to a lot of inconsistency if you're doing that. So let's pause just before impact. We've got a nice angle, this wrist is flat. At this point, my thumb is pulled back toward my body. I've got all this lag, and then we're gonna pause in the straight line release in the top speed golf system, and we're gonna work on this thumb being down. So I went from the up to down. 
That's that whip action that's happening through there. That's that snap. And when I do this correctly, I feel like I'm just going to take the bottom two inches of this grip with my bottom two fingers. That's where I'm going to feel the pressure there. And I'm just going to snap the shaft, snap that grip right off the club. That's going to help with a ton of speed. So let's go ahead and pause and do that about 15, 20 times. Pausing here and then boom, releasing that, pausing here, wrist nice and flat, wrist turned down. After we've done that about 20 times, let's get that same feeling and more of a full swing, just a practice swing there. So we're not gonna hit any balls yet, we're just gonna get used to that feeling, and then we can go ahead and take it on out to the driving range and start hitting some shots and then out onto the course. All right, so that's piece number one, snap, don't slap. Piece number two, where it's the same old saying we've heard for a long time, but with a new twist, we're gonna tee it high and let it fly. Now the reason you wanna tee this ball high is a couple of things. So first off, if I have a great drive, what's happening are two things. Number one, I'm gonna hit this ball a little bit higher on the club face. Now as I start to hit it a little higher on the club face, there's actually more loft on the top of your driver. Your driver isn't flat like a, like a sheet of metal. It's actually rounded. If, you're, if you were to take this and bring this out into a full circle, it actually makes about a three foot circle is how the, the face is curved. So it has a slight curve to it, meaning at the bottom of the driver, you're gonna have a lot less loft. This is an eight and a half degree driver. At the bottom, there's probably five or six degrees, four degrees, something like that. At the top, there's probably 12 or 13 degrees. So if I hit it at the top of the face, it's gonna launch higher. That's great for distance. That's what we really want. The second piece is, as I make contact higher, it actually has a gear effect and the ball is stuck to the face and actually puts a little top spin, not really top spin, just less back spin, and it gets the ball to knuckle through the air. That's a real key for high, long drives. The higher I can hit it, hitting it on the top of the face, and the less spin I can have, also hitting on the top of the face, means the longer drives that I'm gonna have. That's the first piece. The second piece to this is I actually wanna be swinging up on the ball. Again, if I'm coming down on it, I'm kinda of swiping across the ball, and now I'm getting all this back spin. The ball wants to shoot up, kinda of float in the air, and then fall out of the sky. You don't get any kind of good distance. But if I can set this ball up where I'm actually swinging up on it, now again, it's gonna promote that higher launch and it's gonna promote that lower spin. So the more I can hit up on this golf ball, the better I'm gonna be for creating as much distance as I can. Well, if I have the ball low on the ground, let's imagine this ball is barely teed up on the ground, just like this, it's teed up on the turf. If I swing up, if I try to hit up on this, now I'm gonna miss over top of the ball. No way to make it happen. Plus there's no way to hit it anywhere but the bottom of the face. So I want this ball teed up nice and high so that I can hit it on an ascending angle on an upward angle and still make contact with the top of the face. Now with your iron shots, it's going to be on the ground. We're going to have to hit down on it. If we had the luxury of teeing up iron shots, we'd do the same thing, but we don't. We have to hit it off the ground. That's why you hit down and take a divot with your irons. That's the easiest way to hit it off the ground, and that's why this is different with the driver. So a couple things that we want to note here, and I'll show you some slow motion video with this also. I'm going to play this up in my stance slightly. I got the ball teed up. For me, I like to have it at least a half a ball above the club or a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and tee this on about three quarters of the golf ball sticking up above the crown. I'm gonna have that a little bit up in my stance. If I really wanna get one, get a hold of one, get some extra distance, I'm gonna play it up here toward my front foot. Again, that's gonna help promote me hitting it on the upswing. And then number three, I'm gonna visualize in my mind that I'm gonna go ahead and knock it off the top of the face. I don't wanna get anywhere near the bottom of the face or it's gonna kill my distance. So I put the ball up in my stance, I've got it teed up nice and high, and now I'm gonna feel like I'm swinging up on the ball and de-lofting the face so that I still get that high knuckler, almost a little bit of top spin on the ball is the way that you wanna think about this. So if I do those things, man, that's really gonna help me to increase my distance. That one felt great. Big high ball, knuckled through the wind, really nice shot. Now I saved the best for last. I know a lot of you guys out there are having those balls that slice if you get into any kind of wind or you struggle at all with distance, that slice is actually just gonna eat up your distance really, really badly. So if I wanna hit it farther, I've gotta hit a little bit of a draw or at least dead straight shot if I wanna get the maximum distance on there. That's gonna get the least amount of spin. That's gonna help the ball to really launch pretty fast. So when I'm setting up to this golf ball, a lot of times what I have people visualize is that they're coming through and the face is really square. And they imagine they're just gonna kinda of pull this club through square and the ball's gonna go right down the middle of the fairway. And when they have that visualization in their mind, because they struggle a little bit with a slice, the ball just tails off to the right and tends to slice. 
If you feel like you're gonna hit it square and 90% of the time it's either fading or slicing, this is really gonna help you. So I wanna imagine the club face, imagine that, that piece of metal is gonna wrap around the outside of the ball. So if I'm looking at this golf ball from my perspective and I kinda of put a line through the middle of the ball, that would be dead square. If I hit right on that line, that would be a square shot. Now when we do that, like we just talked about, we tend to slice. That means my club was actually a little bit on the inside of that line. What I want you to feel like you're doing is to get that club to wrap around to the outside of the golf ball and hit on the outside of that line. Now what that's doing is that's closing the face a little bit more. And when you first do this, you're gonna to start to hit some shots to the left. That's okay, that just means you're doing a little bit too much but that ball is going to start left and it's going to hook even a little bit more to the left, especially for you guys that are coming over the top. Now I'm getting to the outside of that ball and it's starting left going even farther left. That's all right. Let's start out on the range doing this and I want you to hit those shots that do go to the left and then gradually we're going to start to come a little bit more from the inside. I'm going to feel like if I'm at home plate and the second base and the baseball field is directly in front of me, I'm swinging more out toward first base or the, the visitor's dugout. And now I'm going to be releasing that club, getting it to outside the ball. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to start a little bit straighter and then it's going to draw. After you've gotten a few of these in where that ball actually starts to turn on over a decent amount, let's just tone that down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit one and really exaggerate though. I'm coming inside and out and I'm letting that face turn over. Now as I'm doing this, the feeling that I'm getting in my hands, if you go ahead and set this club up here, is that I'm taking this club and I'm twisting it just like I'm turning a clock. Like if you can imagine the butt end of the club is a clock face and I'm going to turn that, that's rolling the club. You'll notice when I do that, my left wrist bows. That's what everybody wants at impact. That really helps us what the pros are doing. And my right wrist kind of turns knuckles back this way. That's what's going to release that face as I'm doing that. So we can see that would really get that face to turn on over. I'm going to exaggerate here. Hopefully we can see this on camera, but I'm really going to get this one to swing from right to left. There we go. So we saw that one started down the middle of the fairway, hooked over to the left, almost by the trees. I'm right on track. That's what I want to have happen at first if I'm struggling with that slice. Now the second piece to this, after you've hit about 15 or 20 balls doing that, and you've got the feel for that, I'm just going to tone down a little bit. Don't let that club release quite as much to the outside of the ball, and don't swing quite as far to the right. And now you're going to have that little baby draw that everybody wants to have to get the maximum distance. All right, guys, so take those three tips. Number one, snap, don't slap. Number two, tee it high. Get that ball to launch high with low spin. And number three, get that club head to the outside of the ball to get that nice draw. Now, I bet you've been told that when you want to hit this golf ball, you want your shoulders to be square. I'm going to talk about if you do this the wrong way, how that could be throwing the brakes on your swing speed, how it could cause a chicken wing, and for you to get all arms when you're trying to hit the driver. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple swings. I'm gonna talk about the idea of keeping my chest a little bit more closed. And then Q's gonna read some of the flight scope numbers, see what the swing speed is doing. And I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of opening versus closing with your shoulders and which is right for you. All right, so let me go ahead and jump in and hit one here. And the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have this sensation of keeping my shoulders square. And we've probably all heard this before. We feel like as we're coming down to contact, if I'm looking from down the line, my shoulders could kind of be pointing toward the target. The idea is that if my shoulders are pointing straight, I'm going to hit it straight. If my shoulders are pointing to the right, I'm going to hit a little bit of a draw. If my shoulders are open, I'm going to hit a little bit of a fade. We're going to kind of bust that myth a little bit here, but let me go ahead and start to swing some and, and see what this means. So, what I usually see players doing is not opening enough with their body. So as you come into contact, I see a lot of this where the shoulders are closed, trying to hit that draw, but look how my hips haven't opened very much. My chest or my shirt buttons, my rib cage, however you want to think about that, is also pointing toward the ball. And when I do that, when I don't open with my body, what ends up happening is I have to push across the body with my hands and club and arms. So I'm trying to generate swing speed by pushing the club across my body. I get that chicken wing and I tend to get a loss of club head speed. So let me go ahead and hit one like that. I'm gonna swing and try to keep my body kind of square to the ball. Again, that idea of hitting the draw, and let's see what happens. Yeah, so I kind of pulled it. I really feel like the face was closing down very quick. It was kind of hard to time up the exact sequencing of that. I feel like the next one I may have hit straight. 
then maybe one to the right, then the left, kind of all over the place. But Q, what was my club head speed? And you know, what was my total distance, my carry distance, those kind of numbers? Uh, so club head speed was 94 miles per hour. Uh, total distance was 243, but it only carried 187, not really your best strike there. Yeah, so it's kind of like a low hooking rolling shot. So it really just kind of rolled most of the distance, but only, only carried 190. Again, let me go ahead and try to do that again. I'm kind of locking the body, keeping everything square to the ball, and then I'm kind of pushing across with my hands. Very, very common. I see this all the time. Yeah, and again there, I felt like I tried to not hook it to the left. And again, my club face is going from open to close. It's just so much arms. I really can't square it up very consistently. What was the numbers on that one? So 95.9 miles per hour in the club head speed. A uh, total distance uh, was pretty much the same, 241.6. Okay. So we see how inconsistencies can happen when that's going on. We see how that doesn't necessarily give me a draw every single time. We see how it slows down the club head speed a lot. So what's the truth behind this? What should we be doing? Well, in reality, what we want to be doing is opening up the body a little bit as we're coming through contact. So as I come through contact, my hips should be opening up. I'm using the momentum of my body to get, my, get everything rotating on through, and then my hands and arms are releasing out in front. If I look at my rib cage, so if I get rid of my, my hands and arms, if I look at my rib cage as I'm coming through contact, it's actually pointing out in front like this. So my ribs are opening up, my sternum is opening up. That's what the best players in the world are doing. Their rib cage on average is about 20 degrees open to the golf ball. Now what gives the illusion that my face or my shoulders are square is because I'm in this position and then my left shoulder protracts or drags across my body to make everything look pretty square. That looks really square when you're going from down the line, but if I take my left arm, you'll see my rib cage is actually open. So your body, your big muscles of your body, my legs, my hips, my entire upper body all the way up to my shoulders is square or is actually open. My left arm is just protracted, kind of cinched across my left pec there. If you want to feel this yourself, put your arm straight out and then drag your arm to where it's kind of across your chest like this. You'll feel it pinching against your, your left bicep. That's kind of where you're at at impact. As I bend forward and open up, that's basically the impact position. So that's the reason it looks more square when you're looking from the down the line view. So let's go ahead and do one more here where I go ahead and open up like I should be and let's see what those numbers change. Again, I'm gonna feel like I can really swing hard and release on out in front when I'm doing this. There we go, I actually missed it that one a little bit off the toe, but we're gonna see the swing speed's way up, the distance is way up. It's gonna be a totally different shot. What are the numbers on that one, Q? Uh, club head speed, 120, total distance, about 307. Okay, so I picked up 20-something you know, miles an hour swing speed, driving it you know, 50, 60 yards farther, whatever. We all get that it's going a lot farther when I do it that way. We all get that that looks like a much better swing. And we understand that the hands and arms aren't kind of flipping when I'm doing that. So the big question, how the heck do I do that? What do I need to feel? Well, a big piece of that is what we talked about with the left bicep there and the left pec, your left arm. So if I grab my chest and I have my fingertips kind of under my armpit here, I want to feel like I have my left arm across my body until I'm kind of smushing my fingertips. So if I'm looking at the, the bicep, the inside of my left arm in my pec or this muscle here that's your chest, I want to feel like that's really tight. Like if I tried to pull that out of there, I couldn't get my hand out. It's cinched in there really nice like that. That's the feeling that you want to have when you're coming through contact with your left arm. So as my body rotates open, I'm really tight and connected there. You hear pros all the time talking about being connected. That's the feeling that they're having. This is nice and connected. This shoulder's sturdy, it's tight. This is gonna control my face angle, control my hand path. That's why I was getting those shots that are going all over the place. My face angle was all, you know, left up to its own, you know, momentum and that kind of thing when I didn't have this connected. Now that I have this connected in, I can really be a lot more consistent. Also, when I'm doing this, the second swing key is, as I rotate on through, feel like everything is facing the target. In your mind, if you're one of these players that doesn't get open enough, you wanna feel like at, at contact, you're like this. So your hips, your shoulder, your chest, everything's facing the target. And in reality, it won't be. In reality, it's gonna look much more like what you would see the pros doing, where I'm really opening my body, getting my hips to clear out of the way. So if you keep that left armpit connected, if you feel like at contact, you're facing the target, 
it's going to lead to a whole lot more consistent shots and a lot more swing speed and even better it's going to get rid of that chicken wing with your arm pushing across your body let's go ahead and try it out there we go that was a lot better right down the left center numbers are going to be pretty good on that one so what did it say on that one q uh, club had 120 total distance went all the way up to 343 okay 343 i'm not going to do much better than that now q this brings me another question that i have all the time you know when i'm talking about this with players i get them to open up more i get rid of that chicken wing but sometimes the ball starts to go out to the right what would you recommend if players start to slice when they're doing this right so a lot of times when we get to where we're opening up the body what happens is when we're, we're opening up the chest, the arms and the hands and everything are gonna come out with us because we're used to coming in. If you come into where everything's nice and, and square, club face, chest, everything uh, is really square to the ball. We're used to bringing that club kind of out in front of the body there. And if we keep that same relationship that we're used to, that we're comfortable with, when we're opening up, now we're just gonna come over the top. Yeah, just like that, we're gonna be coming over the top. So what we wanna do is we wanna feel have that same feeling like what Clay was talking about. You have the arm really cinched to the chest. You really want to feel like it's really pushing up against your chest here. And that's going to help you keep the club behind you more so you can swing more on plane. Because if you don't, that's where those big slices or pulls are going to end up coming from. So how about you hit one where you're really trying to put all those things together, where the club's really coming from the inside nicely. Okay. Yeah, so where he's showing there is if you keep doing this motion, you're almost going to feel like with this new swing that you're getting way back in here. The club's coming away from the inside. But in reality, when you open up more, that's going to be nice and square. So let me go ahead and hit one. And now we'll have kind of all the pieces. You'll be opening up, you're getting rid of the chicken wing, you're adding the club head speed. But now with that arm cinched and the club feeling like it's well in here, now when you open up, it's going to be square. You're not going to get those slices. So let's go ahead and try one out here again. All right, hit that one well. So the numbers are gonna be really good on that one. Basically square face, square path. I opened up my body, but then I also got that club coming from the inside. That way when I opened up, everything is nice and straight, not going to the left. So what were the numbers on that last one there, Q? 119.6 uh, club head speed, total distance was 327. Okay, awesome. So hit that one really good, nice and square on it. Now let's recap on what we need to do here. Number one, we have to get the body opening up. If you're one of the players that stands up everything's too square, maybe the chicken wing, feel like at contact, your body is facing. Notice how my body's rotated around here, my hips, my shoulders. You're gonna feel like this at contact. It's never gonna happen. That's not anywhere near where you're really gonna be, but that's the feeling that you're gonna have. Number two, I want you to feel like, so you can come from the inside, this left bicep is pinched against your left pec. If you tucked your hand under there, you almost couldn't yank your hand out. That's how tight it's going to be as you're coming into contact. And then number three, the idea of feeling like you're swinging way to the right is actually the right idea for you because as you start to open up more, that's going to be square, nice and straight through the ball, and you're going to have so much more club head speed, the distance is going to go way up. Now in this video, we talked about how to get speed through the ball, how to keep everything rotating through, but it also matters how much you load up, how much I turn back. I have to get my hips, my shoulders, my club really loaded up so that I can get this power through there. If you do both of those, that's when you see the really big hitters. The guys that are driving at 30 and 40 yards longer in your local foursome and you just can't figure out how they're doing it, they're making a big turn going back and through. Well, I have some great tricks that are gonna allow you to do this even if you're not flexible at all. I'm gonna play one of my best power turn, previews of one of my best power turn videos. All you need to do, click the card that pops up in your screen, if you don't see the card, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. You're going to get instant access. You're going to pair what we learned here, making that big turn, you're going to start bombing the ball. The correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So we don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. 
So in this series of videos, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power, and we're all going to get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos, and I'm going to show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.